So I was thinking about what videos do I want to make for pre-Super Bowl, and I thought, you know what? This is kind of a trilogy of some sorts where we've seen Steve Spagnuolo go up against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl twice before. He was with the Giants as defensive coordinator when he beat Tom Brady both times. So I want to talk about both of those games. What can we learn from them, if anything, is their takeaways, and just sort of talk about them just in their place of NFL history and how this game will also have a place in NFL history being the final part of the trilogy. I mean, they played more than three times, but in terms of in a Super Bowl. And speaking of trilogies, this is going to be a three-part video, one for each game. The first one's going to be the, you know, uh, undefeated 18-1 and one Super Bowl, then I'll go to 2011, and then I'm going to make a final video. It's just capping it off and previewing the upcoming Super Bowl, Super Bowl 55. First, I want to show something from a clip from NFL Game Pass Film Session, which is, by the way, an incredible show. It's on NFL Game Pass. If you have NFL Game Pass, highly recommend it. A lot of people ask me, uh, how did you learn all the stuff that you know about football? A lot of it was from uh, this TV show. I highly recommend it. But Steve Spagnuolo is going to kind of explain his defensive philosophy and how much he loves disguises on this first clip right here. I mean, I'm lining up things and showing the quarterback that it's cover three. What we've always liked to do is not show you. And then the three deep is either going this way or maybe he's coming down and it's... But to me, in today's day and age football, I think you really need to do that to quarterbacks. <laughs> I think it's cover three. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's hard to tell. But yeah, they're not shifted over for man. So. so yeah, in more layman's terms, if you missed it, essentially what he's talking about there is just that he has players line up in a certain position as though they're going to be playing something, but then they sort of rotate once the ball is snapped to something else. So it might look like cover two, but in instead it's uh, cover three or something like that. There's also another clip from that same show where he sort of talks about, uh, and, and they showed a clip uh, of the play itself of, you know, going from a cover two or quarters look, but actually playing cover three and how that works. So I'll play that right here. Yeah, it ends up a weak side rotated three deep. You can see Landon down yeah, here, right 21. Here. Yeah. He's going to end up becoming our hook curl player. Right here. DRC, who's up in the line, he's right going to be our curl flat curl player. Flat. Right here. Right? Up top, you have a linebacker and a nickel that are going to be playing hook curl and curl flat. Yep. And your 3D players are going to be each corner. Yep. And there's your free safety who's going to go to the middle of the field. Yep. So let's see if we did this okay. well or not. Eagles have a third and 11. Falls back. Zips one right incomplete. That's what it should look like. So yeah, that's a lot of the Spagnolo philosophy is plays like that. So that's why I wanted to show it before we get too far into the film study of, you know, uh, the 2007 Super Bowl, just simply because I think it's very important to know. Obviously, every team disguises, but quite frankly, no team runs disguises as well as Spagnolo and the Kansas City Chiefs. And honestly, he was very good with the New York Giants as well when he was worth there. So first, I'll show this play. I'm not going to break it down. Just look at that push uh, the initial defensive line had right there. Uh, the run game did not work for New England in this Super Bowl. So that's something worth noting is Brady, for the most part, was kind of on his own a bit where he had to make things happen through the passing game. One of the things that surprised me going back and watching this game was how many missed reads Tom Brady had. There were a number of times where Brady just missed things. Like right there, this is something Spagnolo does, where he's going to have a defensive back who's lined up with Wes Welker right there, and he's going to actually blitz the defensive back who's currently there, which means that for Brady, you'd want to hit Wes Welker immediately. And for Welker, you'd want to just have a, you know, a hot route where you basically just turn around once you realize that's happening. Brady hits you immediately, and then you run, try to pick up the first down, since a safety is now covering you who's much further down the field, and maybe you can make a move in open space, pick up even more yards. Like, watch, this play starts, and immediately there's an opening right here, but Brady just not looking there. And that's something that Brady didn't really do a great job of in this game. I, I think it's fair to say that. And because of the blitz, there was a free rusher, so bad on the offensive line there. Brady got sacked. And there you go. I mean, that's that's not the Brady that we necessarily have seen in recent years. Again, this is 2007. This is 13 years ago. We're going back a bit. Also, I know people will comment, technically this is 2008. It's the 2007 season, though. 
I was also a bit surprised with, uh, there was a lot of zone in this game. This is going to be a cover three zone blitz. It's, it's you know, Spagnolo and the Chiefs, they play more man than zone, at least that I've seen. So them playing a good amount of, of zone, bit interesting. And honestly, Tom Brady and the Patriots were able to have some success going up against zone. On this play, this is the perfect concept that can beat this type of coverage where you have Randy Moss running deep. And this is going to now mean that when Wes Welker runs his out route in that area, these are plays designed to beat zone. So this can absolutely work out. Watch, Brady takes a snap. Randy Moss does a great job of clearing out that area. Now, when Brady hits Welker, Welker has plenty of room to run. There's only one issue here. Brady throws it deep instead into double coverage, and that's just not a smart decision whatsoever. He was hit as, as he was thrown, so wouldn't have mattered but honestly that might have been a good thing since there was a double coverage and listen Randy Moss is great he might have been able to outrun both of them but it seems unlikely and I think it was a, a too risky he should have hit Welker instead and honestly on a play like this this was just the Giants being ready for stuff this is going to be a quick wide receiver screen but the Giants they you know, they watched film they said hey if we see this kind of formation here it might be a wide receiver screen, so let's be ready for that. And as you see, Brady quickly hits Welker, but there's an immediate tackle. Welker goes nowhere and actually loses a yard. It's obviously very hard to know how much do I want to give credit to Spagnolo for that, how much do I just give credit to the Giants players. It's impossible to fully say, but at the same time, I do think that it's fair to say that, hey, the Giants uh, were smart in this game, so that probably had something to do with their defensive coordinator. I had also forgotten about this situation. This is a 4th and 13, and it's at the 31-yard line. Bill Belichick is not going to kick a field goal here. I had completely forgotten about this. It's kind of shocking to me. Again, the Patriots did lose this game by three points. So, uh, again, uh, it's easy to be results-oriented, but that's something that I can't imagine the 4th down converter bot on Twitter would have liked if it was around in 2007. Predictably, Brady, you know, takes the snap. This play does not end up working out. They do not convert the 4th down in 13. So, uh, yeah, not really sure what was going on there. Definitely kind of a weird decision. So let's now go to here. We're nearing the end of the third quarter. So uh, I know there hasn't been a lot positive for New England, and that's because there wasn't a lot positive in this game. New England scored a touchdown on their first drive. They would score one more touchdown. But other than that, uh, this was just a rough, uh, rough game, honestly. They had a lot of drives that ended up in punts. But this play kind of marked the end of New England just struggling and kind of what they were able to realize was hey the Giants are playing a decent amount of man coverage let's just throw the ball to Wes Welker our man coverage killer like let's do that and it started working watch Brady takes a snap Welker gets open Brady's able to hit him and overthrow it uh overthrow the ref who ducked underneath it which uh by the way very glad we don't have refs in the middle of the field like we used to that that's infuriating they could have ended up scoring on that drive if Brady converted on this play. This is a cover two zone, and something I've talked a bit about in previewing Bucks versus Chiefs is that this Spagnolo cover two, he likes to have his safeties a lot closer to the middle of the field and a lot further in, meaning you can sometimes take deep shots even against cover two, which is usually tough to take deep shots against, and uh, while Brady in New England wasn't known for his deep shots, he was in this season because he had Randy Moss. And Randy Moss running a go route here, this is an opportunity that Brady wants to take. And watch what happens. So Brady, you know, fakes a handoff, uh, fakes a throw, finally does get the ball off, got hit right after he threw it. And if you look, Moss is open. And uh, quite frankly, Brady, any other week of the season, makes this throw. And that would have been a huge play. And really, they just weren't able to convert on this play. As you see, Brady just misses the throw, and that's just that's just tough. It wasn't just that one. There were other examples of this, where this one's another one. Uh, Randy Moss, uh, he, he got open at times. He absolutely did. I know he only ended up with 62 yards, which isn't awful, but uh, he could have easily had over 100. So on this play, it's a cover three zone. Moss is going to eventually run over the middle. Uh, and keep in mind, the defensive player who's currently uh, lined up on him, he's the deep corner right here. So Moss feels very comfortable he can get to the inside, and Brady obviously likes that opportunity as well. As you see, Brady takes the snap, and again, Moss is open here. I mean, this is a throw that Brady usually makes 9 out of 10 times, and it's fair to say Brady just didn't have a great game the first time he went up uh, in the Super Bowl against the Giants, and I think it's fair to give him a lot of criticism for how this game went. As you see, he just overthrows it, and that's just a bad throw. 
As we all know, though, New England did come back and take the lead after giving up the lead in the fourth quarter, where, you know, again, uh, had only scored once all game, but they're about to score a second time with under five minutes to go. Right now, there's five minutes and one second in the game. A lot of it was stuff like this. So the Giants are going to play zone. They're just going to hit Wes Welker underneath the coverage and allow him to do his thing, which is kind of what you have to do in these types of coverages. And it's what New England probably should have done earlier. So as you see, Brady, he's going to take the snap. He fires one towards Welker. And at this point, you're expecting Welker to only be able to pick up like three yards or so. But it's important to remember how good 83 was in open space. He also gets a nice block, so that helps. But as you see, he picks up the first down, gets the ball inside the 30. Then there was this play, which, you know, New England, despite the run game not working, did a great job of establishing the run so that way, you know, in the final four minutes, they could take advantage. Uh, this was how they did it with a play action with Randy Moss running over the middle. Uh, and again, part of it is just watching games from 13 years ago, you sort of like, uh, I'm like, why aren't they running more play action? Well, 13 years ago, teams didn't run it as much. So that's why. But anyways, as you see, uh, play action works out perfectly. Moss wide open, makes the grab, and picks up a first down. Uh, just a really good play. And again, you have Randy Moss. Use him, and now they're in the red zone. So now we have, you know, second down and goal right here. And this is the situation where this is actually going to be one last win for the Giants and uh, one last win for Spagnolo before Brady would eventually take the lead. It's going to be man coverage. It's a cover one man play. But what's really interesting is how New York is going about this, where they have a defensive tackle who's actually going to drop back into coverage. And then they're going to have, this is actually a four-man rush, but it's going to look like it's a cover zero all-out blitz. They have a defensive end and a linebacker who are keeping an eye on the back and a tight end who are blocking on this play. So basically what they do is if they see that, uh, okay, the tight end is blocking, then I'm going to rush the passer. If he runs a route, you follow him. So that way you can kind of neutralize the extra blocker for New England. So even though the Brady has extra blockers, he's going to see a, a blitz and he's going to try and get rid of the ball quickly. And clearly just looking at this play on paper, if this is an all-out blitz, you'd want to throw it over the middle to Welker. That's the best angle. But if it isn't, then probably the one-on-one -on -one matchup to Randy Moss to your right you know, it's not as quite as good of an angle, but it's Randy Moss, so one-on-one -on -one matchup, you'll take that. But Brady gets fooled, and, you know, Welker not able to get open. Uh, maybe he gets open if it's just a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but I think Brady at the last second might have realized, oh, there is a safety there. Uh, I don't know, uh, but either way, not a great decision from Brady. However, on the very next play, what would happen is that it, you have a double team on Welker over in the middle. There's also a safety on that side of the field. You got to be double teaming Randy Moss here. I know he doesn't have as many yards as Welker does, but he's still Randy Moss. This is a mistake from Spagnolo. So Spagnolo, who had a great game, it is going to kind of end with not the best moment. As you see, Moss gets open immediately. Uh, Brady does not miss this throw. They get, the first, they get the touchdown and go up, although we all know what happens. The helmet catch, the Giants win, all of that stuff. So clearly, Spagnolo he won the war, but Brady did at least win the last battle. And so the second time they would play, you'd think that maybe there's some hope for New England. They kind of figured things out. It was just too little too late. So how did Spagnolo and the Giants beat them again, and only give up three more points than they gave up the first time. Well, you'll have to check out my next video. Uh, it's going to be out later today, so definitely check that one out. Just uh, wanted to make these in separate videos in case uh, anyone only wanted to watch uh, a, a video about one of the games or only want to talk about, you know, the, the final part of the preview. So yeah, definitely check that one out uh, and hope to see you then.